Calyrex Shadow Rider just top cut Santiago Regional Championships over the past weekend. And this is my smug face. And why do I have my smug face on? A little over a week ago, I made a video called Do Not Fall For This Meta Trend. In the video, I explained how the meta game had centralized around countering Calyrex Shadow Rider. So what made me believe in Calyrex Shadow Rider even though its performance had been lacking? As I explained in the video, Early in each new regulation, the main focus generally revolves around countering the new top threat introduced with the new rule set. With Calyrex being the main focus, placing number one in 99% of trainers tier list, it's very clear early on what needs to be countered. But as new regional championships occur, meta trends start to form and regional champions are crowned. This creates a very interesting problem for VGC. As new champions arrive, you are forced to adapt your team in order to correct your matchup into the new popular strategies that form. But just as you thought you figured it out, a new powerful strategy appears at the next region. There is an explanation for this. It gets a little complex, but I want to teach you about the psychological effects of the new regional champions. In VGC, you are allowed six Pokemon on a team. In the early meta, there's a lack of information as the events haven't occurred yet and everyone is basically scurrying around testing new strategies and ideas, and of course, countering the perceived biggest threat. But as the events finish, meta trends occur, and there's a sense of guidance as the pros set the tone for the new season. So when Maridon won Indianapolis, and Calyrex didn't perform as well as expected, the new focus became Maridon. Fast forward just one week, and the same thing occurs with Zamazenta being crowned a new champion. But I know what you're thinking. How does this affect Calyrex? Let's say this is your team at the start of the regulation. Tons of Calyrex hate. However, there are huge holes in your Maridon matchup now. Here comes the psychology. You are mentally now at a dilemma. I have to count a Maridon. It just won the entire regional. But Calyrex is so strong. However, subconsciously, most players note that Calyrex did not perform as well as expected. So it's a little easier to remove a counter in order to fix your newly created hole in your team. Just as you made your new addition to your team in Steps Zamazenta, another new regional champion requiring another new counter. You're likely starting to see where this is heading now. With another lackluster performance out of Calyrex, it becomes even easier to drop a counter piece in order to further fix your team's newer hole in Zamazenta. This opens a window of opportunity for Calyrex players as the direct counters dwindle down some. Disclaimer, I'm not saying that Calyrex counters do not exist, but only having six Pokemon available to your use, it becomes a lot harder to have two or even three counters making it easier for Calyrex players to maneuver in these matchups. With the added information in the format, this allows Calyrex players to adapt their teams accordingly. So let's break down the adaptations that occurred at the Santiago Regional Championships. All right, as I hop over here to the uh, Santiago VGC Regionals of 2024 that just occurred, uh, we see that Zamazenta takes first place again. I'm not gonna break these teams down too much. My main focus here is definitely gonna be on the Calyrex Shadow Rider because I wanna explain why it did good. However, it is nice to see Zamazenta finally getting another regional win. And you know, after generation eight, uh, seeing some success, so that's nice. It's clear to, see that this rain mode with like a good grass type pokemon right good fire coverage to break like some of these other pokemon and then you know just having a rain mode is definitely the way to go with this zamazenta as we see all three kind of support the rain so like that's really cool to see an uptick in clefairy usage uh, makes sense right because uh if you didn't know zamazenta cannot ko clefairy with a heavy slam uh it takes two so if you cycle or protect then you could take a third one uh, this team's interesting. It can boost up on the special side as well as uh, neutralize your physical uh, attack. And it, you can't tell this team is clearly just click Tailwind and, and use Terrapagos, right? Like, there's not much offensive pressure going on here. There is, but like, if you really break it down, like, this is support, this is support, although it hits pretty decent. This can hit you really hard, uh, but generally not crazy hard. And this has to set up, right? So it's, it, the team looks like it does have another mode to set up, but it's mainly just all about protecting the king or queen right here in the Terrapagos, you know, redirecting, neutralizing, stuff of that nature. Another Zombies at the team here, top four. Notably, we see Fluttermane uptick, three Fluttermanes in the top. Fluttermane with another regional championship win. Really good Pokemon, immune to that body press, so a good rotation on the body press. Probably good speed control for a team like this that's balanced. I guarantee if we click on this, it's Icy Wind. Uh, yeah, I didn't have to look at it uh, to tell. It was just the way the team complexion is. There's really no speed control. I know that you're not running Tailwind right now. You need Wide Guard for the metagame. Uh, so having two 135 base speeds are pretty good. 
This is speed tying uh, max speed Maridon. This is actually faster than max speed Maridon with the booster, and this is speed tying. So, like, this is fixing a Maridon matchup. So that makes perfect sense, actually. And that's part of the uh, thing I talked about with the Fluttermane versus the Calyrex on how this Pokemon is just so versatile. So, like, Fluttermane offensively right now isn't the craziest, but you can utilize it with, you know, Moonblast is still really good, and then you can just get that Icy Wind speed control. Uh, we're going to go down here and look at the other Tropicos team, and... Uh, it's a pretty balanced approach at it. No Tailwind, so this is interesting. Is it Choice Specs? Actually, I want to see if it's Choice Specs. Uh, it is Covert Clerk, Cloak Call Mine. Yeah, so this is more of a setup style team. Nice to see that the setup style Garapagos actually did well. That's what I was playing at the beginning of the format. Very, very cool. Very good team. Uh, basically, same thing, except for I didn't have, like, this was really hard. I had a Moongus here, and I actually thought about teching the Clefairy. Because I, I ran into issues where real boom needs to come, Incineroar needs to come, you need to set this up and you want to clean the game up with this. This is like your 4-4, four, four, right? But then you have Bolt for certain matchups. And I had set up Bolt, so my team was too passive and I had a Moongus here. So like any grass types gave me really kind of a hard time, especially real boom, because they could like grassy glide, crack the shield, and then hit you with something like Urshifu. So it was annoying. The seeing Clefairy on here is actually really, really nice because you could set up your Pokemon, but you could also just redirect those spores with the terror but you can also like friend guard and just redirect those fighting moves right so they can't double so like grassy glide plus close combat would just go into fairy and that's actually turns that to a bad play really good adaptation from this player and then of course we see the marco fiero style team i don't know if it's his team or if a uh, team has worked on it but this is the exact team just the goldingo stuff and all that i'm not going to break this down this is a consistent team and it's just the same stuff you know terra normal goldingo and just you know your support stuff here on the rocky helmet terra fire amoongus and all that the main focus is I want to talk about is the Calyrex Shadow Rider. Now, I did call this Pokemon being good. There's a, several reasons I broke down earlier in the video. But, like, when you see a body press Pokemon taking over the metagame, you're naturally immune. This is really good. This has 140 special defense, right, Zamazenta? But, however, like, it needs to hit you on the physical side with those moves. You're living a Heavy Slam. You're living a Behemoth Bash if it has it. Um, and then you're just, like, going off. Being able to set just one nasty plot up on this Pokemon, you're threatening Zamazenta already, especially if it's these are Terra Ghosts. So let's let's hop over into these teams and let's break down what they do. All right, so we got Paul Ruiz's team here, uh, Incineroar, Citrus Berry, Terra Ghost, and notably no no Will o Wisp or Flare Blitz, but it is the Taunt. This this is really really good for stuff like Frigorath, Trick Room, even setups Pokemon that want to come into the matchup. This is a very well built team, and I'll explain why. Calyrex Shadow Rider is struggling right now with things like Wide Guard and stuff uh, with Astral Barrage. So having this Raging Bolt on the team is actually very nice. And they, notably it carries Thunderbolt, which is one of the adaptations I made in uh, one of my videos because Pelipper is literally all over the metagame. So you want to single target hit Pelipper four times effective damage and you want to be able to take out those Pelipper on the Wide Guard. I haven't seen too much Mian Shao Wide Guard. It's mainly just been Pelipper because the amount of support that Pelipper can provide to some of these other restricted Pokemon. So it's very nice to have that. You can also taunt the Pelper, although it's very risky because, you know, Pelper can just attack you. Parting Shot Fake Out, just standard stuff. This Bolt's the standard as it gets, except for Draco Meteor. Um, this is interesting, but it makes sense, right? Good chunk of damage uh, versus the Dragon Pulse. You're not setting up. So, I mean, it is a great chunk of damage, actually. And the thing I love about AV Bolt is you can get a Draco Meteor off sometimes even two. And even though you're neg four, then you can just start Snarl supporting and, like, get, you know, just... Thunderclap to break a sash like it, it can still stick on the board even if you're neg four like you don't necessarily have to reset this pokemon i'm gonna hop down to the calyrex now this is where things get a little interesting um and i'll explain why some of the moves but Terragos, uh just like wolf ran just to boost up these astral barrages also you're weak to a ghost and dark four times so cutting this to a two times weakness is nice and then um the interesting part is not the barrage or the nasty pot but the pollen puff right a lot of trainers opted for draining kiss which is a fairy type move and you would generally want a Terra Fairy to boost the damage and it would heal you up. Pollen Puff actually makes perfect sense on this team. Not only is it super effective to Dark types, um, the Azidor is going to take a neutral hit because it's part fire, but it's super effective to Dark types uh, and it can heal your teammates, right? That's very important because like AV Bolt's really hard to clear. So if you can like support with this Pokemon, sometimes like Calyrex isn't the best spring uh, if they have so many counters. However, this makes the Pokemon very uh, unique because... You want to bring your restricted Pokemon to every single game that you can, right? If the teams now in this single restricted uh, formats are built around bringing your restricted, the statistics are just way too high and you're losing value if you don't bring it. I'm not saying you can't win games without it, but you're just seriously like playing an uphill battle if you don't bring your restricted. So the fact that this team is built like this, and we'll speak on the Como in a minute and why this is just so good, is like 
Pollen Puff is insane, right? Like you can just heal this up. If it's half HP, you've already chipped it down, you heal this up, boom, you're good. It's same with Incineroar. Citrus Berry, breaking through Incineroar, and you could just Pollen Puff it because you're really fast. So imagine if you're like 60%, Citrus is gonna proc, and you just Pollen Puff your own Ensign, and it lives another hit, parting shots, knockoffs, whatever, and, and Citrus is still intact. Obviously, because, you know, Citrus can ex exist with this, right? With the uh, As One ability. So imagine like pres preserving that health. Or actually, that interaction makes even more sense because Citrus won't proc. So imagine being at 30% HP and you like heal this up, it lives another hit and it's able to get another parting shot off. Very good synergy here, obviously with the uh, Raging Bolt. We'll go down here and speak on the Kumo because I can talk about the Palm Puff there. This is very, very good. Um, actually, let's not skip over Ogre Pond. Ogre Pond is just standard. I mean, that's why I was kind of moving past it. It's, it's very standard. But yeah, Ogre Pond's really good redirection for the support mons like Kumo here and even Calyrex. You can uh, also threaten Incineroar, which is one of the biggest uh, Calyrex uh, Shadow Rider counters, counters. This is really good. Dual support, right? Follow me to help this out. Also, uh, Ivy Cudgel, Terra Water, KO Incineroar is pretty nice, or you know, does a huge chunk of damage, and the Astral Barrage actually uh, can chip it down enough to where that does probably pick up. So that's very nice. I know we're skipping over combo here, but uh, let's go to the Whimsicott. Covert Cl Cloak, this is very good. You can set up a Tailwind mode here. Boom, right here with the Calyrex and the Whimsicott. Just no fake out, Tailwind go in and do tons of damage and imagine doing this tons of damage training your calyrex up front and then having like an ogre pond raging bolt in the back right that's 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 scary because it does a lot of damage moon blast uh stab tailwind helping hand and then encore very good move set but now let's let's go back and let's talk about this combo this is a very unique and very good bring for this team what beats calyrex shadow rider dark types right or ghost uh ghost types Calyrex can handle ghost types. That's why it's not a very good counter. It's the, it's faster. It's going to just remove its four times weakness and hit you for super effective damage. So it's not ever worried about ghost types. But dark types it is because resist uh, dark types, resist astral barrage, and usually these carry a psychic move, so they're immune, right? So dark types are the number one counter to Calyrex Shadow Rider. Kumo has body press, right? You just set up body press iron defense, and now you're just hitting all the dark types for super effective make matters worse for the entire team like your incinerator is really baited into wanting to tear a ghost you don't want to take a body press and as we talked about in the zamazenta video the intimidate doesn't matter you intimidate this goes off to defense stat so if you could follow me set this up right get uh one plus one uh you're literally threatening any fighting or any dark type that wants to come and counter your calyrex shadow rider this is a very smart pick Overcoat, so you can't hit me hit with the powder moves. Very, very nice. So Amoongus doesn't threaten this. And then Shadow Claw for coverage, I'm sure, for like Color X Shadow Rider and stuff of that nature for those other ghost types. And even just having the coverage of like, if you don't have this, if this got KO'd or just to leave your Pokemon set up, like if they tear a ghost and you don't have this in position, then you just Shadow Claw. Like very, very smart by Paul Rees. Very well built team. I really like this team. Now let's go, let's go back and let's talk about the other one. So the other team here is a little bit different. Let's go ahead and check it out. So this has Raging Bolt. The, notably, you're going to see Raging Bolt with Calyrex. The reason these are so nice together is, again, that Pelipper. Pelipper is just way too much for the, the team with Wide Guard, and it does too much damage. That makes sense, right? Standard, Draco Meteor and everything. We can head over to the Calyrex Shadow Rider, and this one's just different than Polar Reese's, and it's also very nice. This is the Fairy Setup one that I was talking about. Draining Kiss, Astral Barrage, Nasty Plot, and Protect. So you set up a plot, you get plus two, you can heal yourself with the uh, Draining Kiss because it recovers uh, damage when you, or covers HP when you do damage, and you Terra Fairy so you resist the Dark types. Covert Clerk is nice because when I was testing the Nasty Plot Draining Kiss set for uh, Calyrex Shadow Rider, one issue I was having is when you are going to Terra, you're pretty much forced to Terra with this Pokemon, especially with the Incineroar everywhere, and then this they can they can fake out uh, cycle this Pokemon at that point because you're not Ghost type anymore. That was one problem I had. Having Cloak on is good for that. Also, the Snarl, right? Because Raging Bolt's uh, with Helper. Uh, we talked about Psychology earlier in the video. This is already a good Pokemon. But then we, when you add other things into the metagame that are guaranteed to uh, be in your tournament run, such as a Pelper, the Raging Bolt is just a must-have for the team. So, it's of course, these Raging Bolts are always carrying Snarl generally right now. So having this Covert Cloak to help out with Snarl helps. Also, another... Uh, node to the psychology is like this is definitely coming for those Terrapagos matchups for Snarl. The Snarl is a big part of the metagame here. So this is actually a pretty neat item. Um, the defensive Terra makes way more sense on it because you don't have that Focus Sash to kind of help this thing out. So you really need to Terra, save your Terra for this Pokemon or just end game cleanup. We see Incineroar. This is the, as standard as it gets. Safety Goggles Ghost. 
Make out Florbit's parting shot. Knock off if it doesn't, uh, if it isn't broken, don't break it, right? This is a really good Pokemon. Urshifu, standard as it gets as well. Paradark really threatens the ghost type and the fighting type here, close combat. Uh, and notably, you're going to see a way to threaten dark types uh, with these Calyrex as well as the Raging Bolts for general support. Close combat that you can't protect. If you tear a ghost, this is Sash. It's going to live for a hit. Uh, that's fine. Or eat the parting shot, which doesn't matter because Wicked Blow hits critically and ignores stat drops. So, again, another way to support the dark types that are going to come check your Calyrex Shadow Rider. Very, very nice and very cool. Gastrodon's a neat Pokemon. I'm, I'm assuming this is the uh, Kyogre matchup. Uh, you do have the Raging Bolt, but notably, like if you get, even if you Thunderclap, right, and they're Terra Grass, uh, Origin Pulse and Water Spout do so much damage to this thing, even even AV. It's, it's actually ridiculous. Like Kyogre is such a good Pokemon. So having access to the Storm Drain here to be able to soak up Kyogre is pretty nice. Terra Ice, so you still resist the Calyrex Ice Rider. Um, you ditch your Freeze Dry weakness. There's a bundle for whatever reason. Uh, notably too, your ground type, so you're immune to everything but Draco Meteor off of Maridon. You can hit the Maridon for Earth Powers. You can hit Ice Beams into things like Tornadus, uh, which is very nice. Amoongus, stuff of that nature. Also, Yawn is very, very huge for this team. All right, let's say that you fake out plus Nasty Plot with the Calyrex here, and then you next turn you protect, you parting shot. So they're neutralized, they're and they can't like, hit you, right? And you put your Yawn in. Not only can this do massive damage, but you can also yawn like the rotations that are going to come in to eat this damage. Like, let's, let's say the board state's not exactly set up for Calyrex and, you know, you put your board state to come in. Usually the Incineroar comes in always to, you know, eat the Astro Barrage shit, especially if it's boosted. To be able to predict and yawn that slot is actually a lot of value as well. Lastly, we see another uh, Icy Wind, Booster Speed, Flutter Main, Terra Grass, I'm, I'm assuming for those Among Us, um, also probably tanks uh, Kyogre hit, I would imagine. Um, I don't, because uh, definitely with its uh, special defense, uh, yeah, it's a very good Pokemon. Uh, that probably lives one from Kyogre. So that makes sense. And you get speed control and just kind of do massive damage with this team. That's going to be it for this video. Let me know down in the comment section below. Do you think Calyrex Shadow Rider is real? Do you think this was a fluke performance or do you think it's here to stay? Thank you guys so much for watching. Keep practicing and I'll see you on the next video.